Use case number one, first one to tackle is RBAC for a basic AWS account and to basically understand um, how to set up properly uh, users, groups, and I would also say roles and attachment to policies. I would add to that, look at the other policy types when you're dealing with things at a simple level in IAM. Look at things like, like for example, an S3 bucket should always, always, always have a bucket policy not be reliant on IAM for security, in my opinion. So learn the stack of policies and do it when you're still small. Then you can move on to when you really start to grow and whether that, whether you have, uh, you already are in an organization that's huge and distributed and diverse, uh, dispersed, or if you're just learning this to begin with, I would still start by getting my head around the problem space in one account or a small number of accounts using RBAC. Um, and then I, I'm a huge fan of the ABAC, uh, the attribute based access control for, uh, for uh, scoping those uh, action and resource type policies uh, by team. And then finally, uh, third use case is writing policies that are going to be used in the production environment. Never, ever, ever put like list permissions for S3, never put IAM uh, grants on stuff that's gonna be running in the infrastructure. Like if you have an EC2 instance that can change IAM policies, it's game over, right? Um, and also, if you're doing EC2, uh, never have an EC2 instance running a policy that allow that has the action, I think it's EC2 assume role, which allows it to change IAM roles. Again, that's almost game over. 